Got it. Now I have it. Okay. okay. Do you? But I might make the, uh, di- I might I make the, it. No, I. <laughs> It being 7.30, I'm going to open the meeting, and I will say right up front that this meeting is being recorded. And Danielle, if you would like to read that uh, little blurb from the governor, please. Sure. Um, Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by visiting https colon slash slash us02 web.zoom.us slash j slash 985-4300926 or by calling in 1308-715-8592 meeting code 985-4300926. Okay. Yeah, so I want to do, I want to start, I'll, we'll start right out with 148, 150 uh, Park Street. Um, and um, we can, uh, let's see, I'm looking for this memo here. So, so uh, what do we have for changes on that today? So where are we with that? Uh, Chris is going to get us started. Okay, Chris. All right. Um, so basically, we went with uh, Finecom last week. This, I'm sorry. This is Chris Chris Latham because it's, a rec- it's being recorded. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> and it's me. Uh, so Chris Latham for the applicant. Hey, um, well, thank you. So so basically, um, we met with fi- finance committee last week, and uh, there was a suggestion made um, that we add language to the bylaw uh, that basically states that the affordable housing unit shall be affordable in perpetuity. So if I can share my screen for a moment, I can um, show you folks where that is in the revised bylaw. Okay. So basically, I don't know if you can see it, but it's this highlighted section right here. And no, what we don't we, have it. We don't have it yet. Chris. It, didn't, it didn't share, Chris. Oh, it didn't share? All it right. Yeah. All right, there we go. So we'll do this. Let me see if I can share. And then let me um, just show you this. So it's a nice picture. <laughs> so you. hopefully you can see this now. It's the highlighted section there. So as we as we discussed previously, uh, we proposed an increase in the affordable housing units to 15%. And then we, we just added it at the end here in perpetuity. Um, so hopefully you folks can see that highlight. We, no, we're, we oh, can, I think we're on the wrong page. We can just see the perspective, right? Right now the color perspective is up. Just the rendering. Yeah. Oh, the rendering's up? Rendering's um, up. <laughs> okay. How do I share this thing? Um, nice rendering. Thank you. It is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So you, I guess you, you can't see what I'm seeing then. Um, Anyways, it's in it's in section 200-171. Uh, it's the second paragraph in the first sentence, and uh, it's in the warrant article that um, Danielle has. I, b- I believe Danielle, you probably shipped that around. Yes. So you'll have it in your um, meeting materials. It's um, the copy of the article, and um, just the language in perpetuity was added um, to be sure the affordability would stay forever. Um, I was that I think that was the only final change since the last time we we spoke about that from what I can remember. Yeah. Um, but that final text that you have in your meeting packet is as it was submitted um, to it, for the warrant. And with the public hearing being on April sixth, there I mean, you know, minor changes can be made to it still, um, just as long as they're not major changes. Right. Yeah, but I, I see I see his homeowner units. Home ownership units in per- and perpetuity. So, I found it in the uh, in the article. Thank you. Yeah. So it's it's in perpetuity. It's fifteen percent, and it's to be totally located um, on on the premises. So those were some of the comments that the fi- finance committee had made over the last uh, two two meetings that we had with them. 
And then um, Larry's here as well. And um, Larry's made some modifications as you've seen in the rendering. Uh, so um, I don't know if Larry wants to talk about that briefly. I know you have uh, a lot of things going on tonight, so we don't want to eat up too much of your time. Won't take me long at all. Just uh, this, this is more just to give you a sense that uh, we did spend quite a bit of time to, to do a fairly major uh, rework of the elevations and uh, uh, didn't, didn't require too much in terms of the, the floor plan, but the, um, we, we've simplified quite a bit. And instead of sort of just doing a, a modeled building, we've now shifted more towards uh, a building that feels more like an enclave of, of associated structures, uh, historically based, and um, a little more uh, consistent with a little bit of everything in the in the center of town. But we're we're playing off of, to some extent, a little bit of the rural heritage. But more than anything, I think you know this just gives a, I, I think a better sort of assemblage of, of style and, and a clearer sense of each of the, the elements of the building. And so I think that's our, you know, our goal here is to, to you know, make this a much more rich and, and appropriate building. I think it's a rather, rather significant change from the previous variation uh, in, in terms of its aesthetics. So just wanted to give you a sense of this for now. I don't have to explain too much in, in Anything else? We've already covered the, the basics of the design. Mr. Pierce? Yes, Mr. Hayden. So I must say you did a nice job on this. It, it, I look at this and it, it really goes well with the original building. That's, that's looks like it has been, it, did you, did you rotate it a little bit in this view from its original location? The, uh, the yes the the McLean house we did the McLean house slightly. yes yeah it's it's it looks like it's rotated a little bit so it's more front it, it's facing us nicely what was the uh, what was the outcome at the historic district I know that you folks went and talked to them or well we you, you, we were meeting with them on Monday um, <clears throat> we shared with them uh, uh, we 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 shared with them we we've given all of the members. Uh, large colored blueprints of the plan uh, and they felt like that would be helpful um, to, to have to look at and talk amongst themselves um, uh, more helpful than, than looking at on uh, looking at it on the computer and they have it they have it in an email form like, like this with the, with PDF also uh, so they're able to communicate between uh, you know, they, they got it a few days ago. Uh, between then and our meeting on Monday, uh, they're going to. They're. It'll, it'll be our first interaction over over the the plan uh, revisions that were the result of our first meeting with them. So I, I suspect that uh, we may have one more meeting with the historic district commission after Mondays, as a to to. Uh, uh, tweak and fine tune, but I, I, I think that this is uh, is getting us pretty close um, uh, with that. Okay. I was I was just I was just uh, uh, interested. <clears throat> okay. Chair Pierce. Yes, go ahead. Hi, uh, my apologies. Uh, I, I think I just want to get clarification as I was signing on. I believe uh, that attorney Latham said that it was going to be 15% affordable. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. And, and we met with the uh, finance committee um, last week. It was our second meeting with them. Um, we, they had made recommendations that the amount of affordable units be increased. We increased that to 15%. They had made a recommendation that all the affordables be located on the premises we made the modifications to simplify that so that all the affordables are to be located on the premises. And we added language that they had suggested. Um, and, and there weren't any votes. This, we, these were comments by members of the finance committee that we incorporated. So they, they also made the recommendation that it uh, state that it be in perpetuity affordable. And that, that we added that as well. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. Um, any, uh, anything else you want to add to that at this point? I think we're all set unless Bruce, you have any comment you want to? I don't. I just wanted to share the, where we are with the Historic District Commission. And uh, I, I suspect that we'll meet with them twice before we see you folks again. Okay. All right. Thank you. All Chris, right. you can take your screen share down. All right. Thank you for your time. Right. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, before they disappear completely, anybody else have any have any comments or comments for them or questions at this point? That this is just informational. Okay, looks like we're all set. Thanks very much, Chris, Bruce, all, everybody. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Warren, you got your new member down in the bottom corner there. Or now he's in the center. Yeah. Jeremiah's here. <laughs> yeah. There you are, Jeremiah. <laughs> Good. Um, we got a few minutes here, so how about if we uh, do the uh, bond release? We have a bond release here somewhere. So, Mr. Pierce, we got to do a workshop so you can teach the select board how to always seem to produce some extra minutes. Maybe we can do a <laughs> joint meeting, and you know, you and Mr. Hayden can just be like, yeah. It's incredible every time I'm jealous. <laughs> well, we've been doing this a long time, so we know how to keep things moving along. So uh, for Mallard Lane, we have a bond relief. So if that's Ryan, actually just, the... yeah, that's actually rather than a bond, that's the um, remaining release of their inspection funds, okay. I think, that was left in the account. Yeah, so that's what it says, inspection funds. Oh, so do yes. we need a motion for that? I believe yes. we have a motion for that. Okay. Chairman Pierce, I Please. move that the Community Planning Commission vote to release the remaining inspection funds in the amount of $2,900 for the Mallard Lane subdivision. Second that. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Redloff. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And uh, okay, and uh, looks like we have uh, a. <laughs> Jeremiah, did you uh, vote on that, or are you uh, waiting on that? You're, you're muted, so you're going to have to unmute yourself. Apologies, apologies. Um, I guess I would abstain at this point, since I, I really don't know enough. So, um, well, it's a small group, so you, you could have. But OK, then I'm going to have a four in favor, one abstention. And um, so that is, it is passed. Thank you. OK, what else do we get that we could uh, Jump on here. Yeah. Okay, we can vote to endorse those plans. Uh, we don't have any questions on them on the uh, 239 North Street plan. Is that correct? We everything is actually there is um I still need to hear back from the fire department. They had to redo that arch area a little bit to accommodate yep. the height, and I haven't heard back yet whether that's okay. So we should really do that at the next meeting. We'll do that at the next meeting, move that off, and 303 Main Street. Well, 303 Main Street, um, we're still getting a clean copy of those plans. Um, we had a pretty rough scan um, and we're just working with the engineer to get a clean copy. So I think we'll be ready for those next time too. Next week, yeah. okay. See, see, uh, Vin, uh, see uh, Vincenzo, see how fast you get these things done when you just put it all off till next week? <laughs> also, I, I would say that in my experience so far on the select board, there's a lot more matter of fact of the CPC and a lot less commentary. How's that? Yeah. Let me let me put it like that. <laughs> well, actually, that's, that's what that's what a planning does. What it does though, in, in true fact, we deal with facts and we deal with with rules and regulations and laws and and we apply them. You know, so that it's actually a little more cut and dried. So I do understand there's more conjecture in the in the uh, select board in things. There's a lot more to, sometimes to look at. So we are kind of lucky to have a some in some cases a cut and dried situation. So. It does make it easier. It does make it a little easier. <coughs> yeah. So, um, so with neither one of those are going to be. So, three hundred three, we're going to wait on that then, and we already did that and that. And that. Do your letter, Warren. I think we could okay, do that. Okay, we can do it. Did everybody get a chance to read the outreach letter to for the yeah. project? Is anybody? Do you have any comments or questions on it? Nice job. 
Then yeah, it looks it looks it, it, it's it's mm -hmm. uh, clear enough that we're just looking. Um, I'm glad you put in there. We're not looking to do a taking or anything. You know, we're just yeah. we're looking for people who volunteer to, to work with us on this. Not not a. I'm glad you made right. that very clear because I think that was important. Yeah. That, that they realize that we're trying to do something with them, not on them or for or, you know without them. So. Mm -hmm. um, do we want so to talk about, um, because the letter does say um, to contact me about scheduling a time to meet with us to discuss this project, do we want to talk about some possible times we could do that? Um, is that more of an email scheduling discussion? Is that? Yeah, um, I think that's more of an email schedule, I, because I think you, you know, first of all, I think you need to hear first from a few people. Let's, let's hear okay. what we got. Let's hear what we hear from them and, and see. I mean, if we only get one person that responds, it's going to be a little difficult to go for. It's going to be extremely easy to have a meeting because you've only got one person to deal with. But if you get your comments uh, from people that say, no, it's got to be nighttime or no, it's got to be daytime, you know, then you'll have a better feel for when it would be, when a, when a, when a, um, a productive meeting could be actually scheduled as opposed to just one-on-one -on -one or something, so. Sure. Okay, that sounds good. So I'll leave it open as far as whether we're meeting, you know, in, in a small group or one on one, depending on who's interested and when they can meet is probably, yeah, you know, it might work. be I would not discourage them. I would not discourage them from if, um, you know, you know, in other words, I'd be willing to say, we'll do more than one if we can get three people at this meeting and two people at that meeting. Okay. That would be okay. I mean, because, you know, it's going to take a little while. And you, we also might find that if we get two or three people into a meeting and we go through this whole thing and then they go talk to the other people and say, you know, you really ought to stick your nose in here. Sometimes that reference will get us the, the people we need. So. Okay. so let's just see what we can get. We'll take what we can get, see what we can do with it. Great. Okay. Thank you. I'll send it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so ZBA, do we have any ZBAs tonight or are we uh, good? I don't believe we do. I didn't look. I, I'm just looking at the agenda. It doesn't um, list any. You know what? Let me just double check. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember one coming in. But let me just quickly check. Yeah. Uh, no, we have none this this time. All right. All right, well, we still got a few minutes before our first public hearing. So, so our first continued public hearing. So um, the only thing really we have left is that 5G cellular. And, and um, uh, did everybody look at the uh, information in there the, and read the, uh, the draft regulations and all that? I read um, most of it. I didn't get to the, uh, to the full law. Yeah. Because I wasn't able to down, totally download it when I had the chance, like I just <laughs> did. And, <laughs> Like and I just did. Work yeah. Um, well, well, you know, well, the law is one thing. The law is gives the, gives the, you know, the the uh, the people who are putting this thing up certain rights, and it's very similar to the '86 uh, Telecommunications Act. But, but um, uh, this is so much more. There's so much more to this. I mean, it's one thing to put a few cell towers up and cover a whole area, but it's another thing when every 200 feet or 300 feet, there's gotta be an antenna. Um, and, and there has to be equipment to go with that antenna to power the antenna because these, uh, these 5G network is power hungry. So um, it's not just getting the units on the poles and getting the, all the equipment on the poles, it's getting the power independent of the lights on the light poles, because I mean, obviously light poles are what we're looking at um, using for um, for mounting these things, because we have places where that's the only thing we have there is a light pole. And the requirement to replace that light pole with a similar light pole with the, um, with the box, with the, all the equipment either inside it or, or out of view, because it looks pretty ugly if you look at the pictures having it hanging on the pole looks pretty ugly. <laughs> and, uh, which um, um, if, if you're hanging it on one of these uh, old wooden poles, it's already got 37 wires on it. You probably won't see it that much, but if you try to hang it in one of the subdivisions that has decorative lamps, decorative light poles, it's, it, you, you just can't do that. So 
So um, is that part of what you're talking about you thought might be a little over the top, Danielle? Um, not necessarily, no. I think um, when, when the, those Burlington regulations came out, it was very early. Um, and I don't think that it had really been fully defined. You know, people, towns weren't really understanding yet what they could and couldn't do. Um, I think what what KP is telling us we should try to stick to is um, what they've put in that draft policy. And um, I think, so the way they've explained this to me is the best thing to do is the select board would be the ones to uh, pass a policy um, because they, that to, to govern utilities in rights of way. Mm -hmm. And as part of that policy, or as a kind of a corollary to it, we can have um, you know an aesthetics policy. But I think that we're going we're needed as far as making recommendations for what's appropriate aesthetically. So if you look at the policy that KP has prepared for us, it's not really for our board, board to pass, but there are these blanks in there having to do with aesthetics, and this is for us to make recommendations for what we think is appropriate. Now, part two <laughs> is to regulate anything on private property would require a zoning bylaw. I have submitted a zoning bylaw for town meeting. It's it's in the folder. Um, it would refer back to the policy that presumably if they see fit, the select board would be taking up and passing. And I, I spoke with the TA and he thought that that could be discussed at their on their agenda on April 12th. Now, if their policy does not pass by the time town meeting rolls around, we should pass over the article because it won't make sense. So select board policy for rights of way, zoning, you know, in the purview of the CPC for private mm -hmm. property and, you know, within the policy would be aesthetics, which would be, you know, us making recommendations. So that's kind of where we stand. The, so the when you're talking about, when you talk about zoning for um, private property, uh, are you talking about the ability of a private landowner to lease space to the 5G network? to um, put an antenna on their property. Yes. So maybe on their flagpole with something buried in the ground. Right. Or, or, or an equipment cabinet at the bottom, but certainly not something, yeah. Right, maybe yeah, there's a hole or a... There's gonna be, um, because I'm looking at some of the fees and some of the dollars that they're talking about needing per antenna or per pole, that's just very expensive. I mean, I don't know how the heck they're gonna justify spending that kind of money when they got to have an antenna every two or 300 feet. Yeah, 5G um, is not the most uh, efficient way to broadcast. No. And it doesn't penetrate stone well at all. Yeah, yeah, well, high frequency. Yeah, that's right. To what wavelength? You and I understand that very well, Warren. Most people <laughs> don't. <laughs> I spent some time in the military with that stuff, so. <laughs> mm. I repaired um, a lot of it. Um, so I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm having a, I'm having a difficult time seeing this be something that anybody likes. It, it, you know, even the town meeting, you tell them they're going to put big, big ugly, hanging big ugly boxes every three or four telephone poles up and down their street. You know. Um, they're going to say, "Isn't there another way? Is there a better way to do? Is there another way to do this?" Um, and I think the only the only other thing I saw in a, in, in a, in a different in, um, involvement was the uh, was the um, vaults, but the problem with that is moisture getting into the vaults. So that's a, that's an issue. Um, well, I think one thing we can do is even though we can't ban them outright, we can we can rank preference for where in town we want to see them. So I would suggest, for example, you know, industrial office, then after that, you know, highway business, then after that, general business, then after that, you know, and, and the residential and the historic town center areas would, you know, would be last. You mean try to take um, control of the, at, at, at the, uh, at the, what, phase it all in, allow it to come in, but allow it to, but call, uh, force it to phase in? Well, we can't not allow it. So we have to say where we prefer it to be located. So they have to look first at a location in industrial office and tell us there's no location available before they could move on to highway business, for example. Well, my concern here is that there's got to be, um, there has to be an initial hookup of some kind. In other words, if you got a whole area, uh, 
let's say Concord Street agreed to put it one end to the other. Mm -hmm. It's got to be fed from one end, but but then nothing beyond it on the on the on the west, and nothing beyond it on the east. Um, how does how do they, they still got to feed it somehow? I so mean, that would be up, you know, is, to them to figure out. I guess if they if they're more than three hundred feet apart, they can't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. That's so I'm I'm I'm, I'm what, you know I, it seems to me that it's going to be kind of a difficult thing and. I'd really, I'd really like to see. Um, I, I really wouldn't mind making the putting, making the best bylaw that we possibly can, and then and, and doing some kind of phasing, just as you mentioned. But uh, I'd like to see it implemented someplace else and see if, if if somebody's solved enough of these problems to make it, you know, to make it palatable. <laughs> well, so far they've really only been coming to <coughs> denser urban areas. They yeah. haven't really come to towns like ours yet, at least not in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, are too far apart. Yeah, and it's not even so much a phasing, it's more of a location preference. Yeah. Or we're telling yeah. them, please go here, but if you can't, you might consider there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We can regulate a little bit how far they can be from people's houses, for example. Um, it's just, and we can we can say that in the historic district, you can't put it on, you know, period lighting. You have to do it on, you know, a utility box or something. I mean, you can do things like that. It's, We're looking at the size of the uh, equipment package that's needed. I don't know. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this whole thing yet. <laughs> right. You know, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, you you be or turn up your volume. Can't hear you. No. Not yet. <laughs> well, there yep. you go. Now you're in. I'm in. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't know what 6G is going to look like, but is, is there a restoration clause with this stuff or is this stuff like here to stay when they do it and just thinking in advance of the type of towers they put in? Yeah. If, if you, that would affect if you, what you choose to do. If you read the thing, there is a uh, clause in there that requires them to come up to decide how much money it would cost to take the whole damn thing out and throw it away should that happen. And we did the same thing with the cell towers. We made if they abandon for them to have enough money in a bond or something, so that if 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 uh, everything goes to five G, we no longer want to sell towers. There's got to be the money bid there and the uh, bond there to take them back out. Okay, so, so that, that is, exists yeah. in this one as well. Okay. Okay. Removal clause. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they changed those historic light bulbs. They're going to have to put the old ones back. Exactly. <clears throat> I suggest that they store them someplace safe. <laughs> Yeah, I would think so. This is because expensive. I don't know what the, this, this doesn't this this might be the next thing, but it doesn't seem to me to be the next best thing. No. Uh, no. So, uh, Daniel, was any other thing you wanted to talk about on this five G? Because I know we. we well, um, so I guess for this to for us to be able to take any steps with it, um, so I guess the. The options would be if we do nothing at all and they do come to town, they can kind of do what they like. Mm -hmm. um, if we at least have an aesthetics policy in place, we can have them adhere to that to the degree that they're required to adhere to it. Um, so I think, I mean, my recommendation would be if we had a little time maybe to continue the conversation either at the end of this meeting or at our next meeting, um, it would be great if we could come up with some aesthetic policy recommendations, which would be filling in those yellow highlighted areas that mm -hmm. KP gives us in their um, sample bylaw yep. and, and give that to the select board and make a recommendation that they pass that policy for rights of way. And then that we go ahead and follow that up with, with a zoning policy that then refers back to that at town meeting. So I did draft a zoning bylaw, um, but it is not done being looked at by KP. They needed more time on it. So that's not really like ready to go, but I did submit it kind of as a placeholder in the warrant. 
So I'll update you on that as soon as I have something more definite. But I mean, of course, if we don't want to go ahead with anything, we don't have to go ahead with anything. But I think my recommendation would be to at least, you know, try to recommend a policy if we can for aesthetics, just so we have some control. Well, I agree. I think we should put one together and we, and we should be um, we should be relatively strict with it because I mean, that would, I wouldn't mind battling with them a little if they come in, but it also may slow them down um, a little bit. Um, and again, because we don't, because we're not so dense, it's going to be more difficult for it to be financially practical to put it in in our town because they're going to need so down many antennas for so few people, basically. So, uh, and after looking at the costs of it, it, it would probably not, it would, it would probably slow them down a little. Um, right. That would also give us an opportunity to watch what some of the other communities do and, and how they handle it. You know how how they handle it, what they put up for structures, and and uh, what it looks like, and it, whether we can modify us to match. I mean, I have nothing against letting somebody else invent this wheel and then stealing it. <laughs> you know, that's uh, probably one of the best ways to uh, to get something that looks good and works good. So, so um, so yeah, let's we'll we'll forge ahead. We'll put some things in there, uh, the aesthetics, and then we'll and we'll put a lot together and see what we do. And, and, um, and go from there. Okay. Okay, it being uh, 8.02, I'm gonna uh, open the continued public hearing for 104 Lowell Road. Um, and we have uh, somebody picking up the, uh, Mark, are you doing this or? Yes, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, would you like me to begin? Yes, please. Please say okay. your name for the, red, for the uh, recording. Yeah, good evening, um, Mr. Chairman and uh, other commission members. Uh, my name is Mark Mastriani. I'm here representing Pulte Homes of New England. We are the builder and developer of Martin's Landing. Uh, with me tonight are, um, is Matt Leidner of Civil Design Group. He's our civil engineer. Uh, um, I have Dan Dumas here from MDM, who is the traffic consultant uh, on this project. And I think Bob Michaud, his partner, will be here uh, shortly. Uh, and also Dan Coughlin, who's our uh, water and sewer civil engineer from Coughlin Environmental, uh, is here with us tonight as well. So this is our team of uh, engineers and professionals that, is, that have been helping me uh, with this permit modification request and, uh, you know, to uh, respond to all of the uh, questions we've, we've heard. Um, so as presented at the last two CPC meetings, uh, we're here for a permit modification and a special permit uh, at Martin's Landing. Uh, we last appeared before the CPC on February 2nd uh, and through the, through the course of, of two hearings uh, there were some really good questions and important you know, items and concerns that were raised by uh, both the commission and um, members of the public. Um, you know, these items uh, have been discussed at length and we feel we have uh, thoroughly you know, addressed um, the items by either myself, Pulte, and or by our team. <laughs> um, but we are certainly here and, and happy to discuss any of those items uh, in more detail um, tonight and answer any additional questions you may have. Um, uh, you know, since at the last, uh, at the conclusion of the last CPC meeting was that one of the last remaining items, open items that we needed to address was to uh, go before the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance uh, for the additional um, fifth story. And I'm pleased to report back to you. I know we've continued a couple of times um, that after a very extensive uh, process, uh, the ZBA uh, unanim unanimously voted to uh, issue the, the variance for the fifth story. <coughs> I think it's important to mention that in order to issue the variance, the board had to determine that the relief uh, could be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and that the relief could be granted uh, without su substantial uh, derogation from the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Um, so, so that's great news. Um, and before turning back over to the commission, you know, I'd like to take a moment 
to um, to recap and and um, the commitments that you know we have made and the de design enhancements to the project that you know we have made as a re as a result of the input received through both through both the CPC hearing process and the zoning board of appeal process. Um, so new from the ZBA process, and I've submitted to the CPC, uh, is that you know we have committed to provide 15% of the additional 52 units that we're seeking uh, as affordable units. Uh, and we see that as a significant commi uh, commitment that will benefit um, you know, the whole town. Uh, my understanding is that the creation of new affordable housing is a real focus and a real goal of, of the town uh, and is also consistent with your housing production plan. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the, the affordable housing came from a request and originated from the Board of, Board of Selectmen, and we were happy to provide the much needed housing, affordable housing. Um, based on the CPC feedback at the last meeting, we did, uh, we have committed to a second, to installing a second elevator in each of the four five-story um, proposed uh, future buildings. Uh, we see this as a significant commitment and an, a substantial improvement to those five-story uh, buildings. Um, also new from the ZBA process is we've committed, uh, we've committed to provide uh, ladder access walkways behind uh, six of the remaining buildings uh, at Martin's Landing um, for the fire department for an added measure of safety. Uh, I worked very closely with Deputy Chief Galvin um, in order to, to, um, to receive his specs for those walkways and, and to be able to provide those walkways for him and his team. Um, and so those, those um, rear ladder access walkways have been added to the site plans, which uh, have been submitted um, to your commission. So they've been added to the plans. Um, and one final um, additional commitment that I wanted to mention is at the last CPC meeting, we. Um, we just saw, I think actually the C, one of the commission members and maybe one of the members of the public or, or a mem, uh, residents at Martin's Landing, you know, asked about um, uh, electric car charging stations. So, uh, you know, we heard that request and we, you know, we thought that was a, a good idea and it could be a, a, a benefit to the project. And so, you know, we've committed uh, in a letter to the CPC to add a dual electric charging electric car charging station to the plans. Um, so, you know, in closing, uh, you know, we feel that the requested special permit modification and parking special permit really has, has good merit. And, um, you know, it, it involves a minor site plan change. Uh, it's really a vertical change and the new five-story proposed buildings still remain under the six foot height requirement. Um, the density, even with the extra units, remains well below the density that's allowed you know, by zoning. Um, and, and the extra units really provide more like-minded neighbors um, to interact and, and, social, and socialize with. Um, you know, we've had an opportunity to review the comment letters that have been submitted to the board. And our team you know, put together and provided a very comprehensive response to each of those comments. You know, we took them very seriously and we've, you know, we've, you know, we believe we've addressed all of the, the comments and concerns that have been raised. Um, and, I, you know, and, and I just wanted to you know, add that this, um, this permit modification request is just tremendously important. Uh, to, to our company, to you know, the success of Martin's Landing uh, in light of the substantial uh, unforeseen soil conditions that you know, we, we found out there at Martin's Landing. And I have gone over that, gone over that at previous meetings. I certainly reviewed that at length, the ZBA process, and I'm happy to do it again, but there's a real, a real substantial problem out there. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, my company, we've, we put our best foot forward here in order to, you know, solve the problem and, and continue to move forward. Um, so we hope that our, our commitments are, are, are well received and will, um, and have helped you to, you know, thoroughly uh, review our request here. Uh, we thank you for your time and we're, we're happy to, 
to review any aspects of the project and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, um, any comments from the board? Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, um, I have just have a quick one. Um, I have a comment. First, the question. The affordable units are you talking, are they gonna all be on the fifth story or do you have, have you decided where those are gonna be? No, <clears throat> um, they, um, what we committed to was that they would, um, would comply with DHCD guidelines so that they would be included in the subsidized housing, housing inventory. Um, and those guidelines, you know, those requirements, um, you know, basically uh, require that you um, interdisperse them throughout the, th throughout the project. So um, what we propose is that we would put, there's eight, uh, you know, affordable homes and there's four five-story buildings proposed. So what we'd like to uh, propose and what is two in each of the four five-story buildings um, that, that would comply with the, with the DHCD guidelines. Okay. Um, and I never, um, I know we talked about it and I know that you brought that up to the, that, that part of what this was, was an attempt to mitigate a, a cost, but I never really got an estimate about the, what the real cost was to remove that soil. And, and my understanding is it's not really that, it's only somewhat contaminated. Um, so that, that, uh, that is true. That is that, not, that, that the actual cost may be far less than oh. what the actual, uh, units will provide you with. As far yeah, as so if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. so the, the, the extra, um, the extra revenue from the extra units will certainly help offset the costs that we are experiencing to deal with the contamination contamination right. issue. But in no way does it cover the entire cost, uh, or it, are we making more than the cost of the removal? So the the estimates that we've provided is that the cost of the remediation and the removal of the soil will be between eight and twelve million dollars. Okay. And um, but what you did say was was important is that um, it, it is correct. The amount of uh, ACM asbestos containing material that is in the soil, you know, out there is considered de minimis. Mm -hmm. There are not asbestos flying around everywhere. It, it, right. we're, we're working strictly with DEP and all guidelines uh, of DEP and um, and there's no imminent hazard out there at all. Um, but it's de minimis. But the problem is, is that once one piece of the ACM touched the, the pile, DEP considered that the entire pile was contaminated or a majority of the pile was contaminated. We've done thousands of tests. And, um, and so that they're requiring a majority of, of the you know, 30,000 cubic yard pile to be removed. And, and you can't just remove it and, and bring it anywhere. You have to remove it in accordance with all DEP, right. guidelines, their whole process. Um, and it has to go to a, a licensed facility. And, right. and that really drives the price. So to, to be clear, the hardship and the financial impact of the remediation was not was not considered when we bought the project and is a significant hardship and a significant financial cost to us. And this, this uh, permit modification is really a solution to help us resolve the issue, but in no way does it co cover the entire cost of the, of the process. We've already spent two plus million dollars you know, working with DEP and all the LSPs and doing all the testing you know, today. Yeah, I've dealt with this before myself doing uh, remediation with his asbestos involved and having to bring asbestos companies in. It's a, it has to be handled very carefully. They're very strict about it. So you are correct with that. So, um, um, but my other comment is I, I, it, it, um, it does make the project a little bigger and I think it probably improves the tax base a little, which is a plus. <laughs> and, we uh, estimated an extra $300,000 annually um, okay. in, in property taxes to the town each year. Right, right. Okay, I thank you very much. Um, now, do um, this is a public hearing, so do I have any members of the public that have any questions? If you would 
could let me know in some fashion that you would like to ask a question. Now is the time. Please state your name and address before asking your question. <coughs> Do I have any takers? Okay, um, so Mark, are we, are we waiting now for anything as far as updated plans or anything, or are we? Uh... No, we, uh, Matt Leidner's here from Civil Design Group, and we, we captured all the commitments that we've made and all the plan changes that we've made um, you know, through the process, and, we, and we've submitted a, an updated set of plans to, to your office. Um, that, that is complete and, and captures all of all of the commitments and changes that we've proposed. Okay. Mr. So, Pierce. Yes, Mr. Hayden. So I got a, I got a few things. Um, I was on the original EDC team that put this property out for RFP and reviewed all of the um, responses from people. And originally Pulte, um, put in two concepts. One was 55 and older, and one was affordable. And the differential in the um, purchase price, was, was a, it was a third less for the affordable housing to build as many, as I recall. And suddenly, they're adding an extra 52 units, and they immediately said, oh, sure, we'll give you 15% of the, the, the new 52 units. It's quite interesting. And also that the fifth story here until the building codes changed recently would not have, would not have been buildable from what I understand. Um, the fourth not story was buildable. Anyway. Pardon? Not wood construction, which is what they're doing. Right, right. The fourth story was allowed because it was sprinkled when they came out with this originally. Since then, before, you know, before they've been able to build the last four units, four buildings, the construction standard has changed and now they can go to five stories. Right. Um, so there's that. The other thing is, is I walked that entire property with, with the representatives and they all knew of what was in the ground and that there had been a central steam plant and there were, there were uh, buried pipes that were still in the ground and very safe in their, in their uh, in situ position and that they needed to be careful when they dug. And I don't know how careful they were and if they didn't cause their own problem because they dug up that Orangeburg pipe that was, uh, that was loaded with this that had asbestos for um strength in it um but i was I, you know i was around it was like they all knew what was going on so it's the the extra cost should have been calculated in originally when they purchased a property and somebody i don't know you know i don't know if someone didn't do their homework or missed it but you know now we're going to get 52 more units. Yeah, we'll get a little bit more tax revenue. Um, but then there's already, there's already 150 units sold. And, you know, they were sold in a, in a complex that's going to have nine buildings with 450 people. Now they're going to have nine buildings with 500, or I should say apartments, but nine, nine, unit, uh, nine buildings with 500 apartments. Not all those people are happy about, what um what's going on yeah there's some these answers have been made you know and it's interesting the parking you know people not being able to parking near their house and and they said they went out and they did all these studies and they went and looked at that the parking lots in the middle of the night well i don't know who you know it's hard to to, to discount that but the residents you know, I'm going to say the residents were wrong that they weren't able to park closer to their own building. Uh, they could be different. You know, I don't know if they can do different things in the parking lot or not, but it, it's just interesting. And we've only got, you've only got 150 out of, out of 450 from the original. And now it'll be 500. 
So we're not even halfway there and they're already complaining about some things. And of course, those original units were four stories with one elevator. And, you know, that's a building code that, that we really don't have, have control over. But it's still interesting. It took so long that once they had a breakdown in the elevator, it took so long to get it repaired. Um, you know, that's, that's a management issue there. So, I, you know, right there, it's hard for me to, to, to believe what management's bringing. Um, you know, and Mark's been around since the beginning. Um, so it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to fathom that, you know, the extra 52 units is a good thing for the town. Um, it brings us a little bit more tax money. It brings us eight units, but they didn't want to bring any. So originally if they had built it and, and paid more money than they did for the property, um, but I wouldn't expect them to pay what they did for the property, but added their probably 20%, which is what we were going to require. There've been a whole heck of a lot of, a lot more affordable units in that, that area than they're going to be with their 15% or eight units out of the 500. Um, so I, I'm, I just have, I'm having some problems here with this since I was, you know, I sat on EDC and then I sat on the CPC at the same time, um, looking at this project from the beginning. So, I mean, water is also an issue. I read some of the fire department and the state fire marshals, uh, interesting comments about would there be enough pressure and can the, can the North Reading pumpers pump the water up the standpipe to the fifth floor? Are they going to have enough flow to fight a fire? Um, you know, that, that, that's a question. Will they have enough, will they have enough flow volume at high enough pressure so that when everybody's taking a shower on the fifth floor of those buildings in the morning or at night, will there be a problem with their water pressure? And will it affect the rest of the town in other places? Um, hopefully, when the new when the new water system comes online in a few years, that will be alleviated. But we still have to have the pressure to pump it there. So there's those those questions. I'm not so concerned about the wastewater because that plant should have been designed with extra capacity. Um, you know, leaching field is is the big capacity for those things. So they're in, increasing their their leaching field. But I thought they were supposed to have their um, already have the license from the state before we permitted anything for for buildings about leaching and septic. That's kind of a question for you, Mr. Pierce. I mean, whether or not they have a per, their, whether or not their groundwater discharge permit allows for the extra units, is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's the question. Because yeah. I, I know that I don't think we voted without that the, the first time around. And I think from what I read in the documentation today that they don't have that permit yet from the state for the extra discharge. I don't know. Is that true or not, Mark? Do you have the permit? Uh, no, that is true. So um, the, the process is, is that once we hopefully receive the local approvals, our next step was to go and then amend the groundwater discharge permit from the DEP, which is the controlling uh, entity and the permitting entity of this. Of this sewer I always thought we did it the other way around. We were looking for the permits up front so that we could then be confident when we, when we permit the project, it be done and ready to go. Um, so. What's the, to, Jim Bark, do you know just offhand, or maybe Dan can answer this question, what the total flows, the average, the daily flow is calculated at? Do you know, Dan? Are you talking about uh, what the septic the, system? Yeah, the total flow for the development? Yeah, the daily flow, the design flow. 60,000 is basically the max day flow. Yeah, so that means that since it's over 20,000, basically the DEP is going to inspect it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's all controlled yeah. through the DEP. Yeah, yeah. basically yeah. So over 10,000. I've done some DEP work, so, so I know they, they, they do their own inspections. They have their own people that do it. So um, so the answer to that is, Chris, is that they wouldn't be able to put that online without the DEP inspecting it, which means they'd have to have a current groundwater discharge permit in place 
and their approval of, a re, of their redesign and then inspected by the DEP before they could uh, access it, so. All right, so permitting, us giving a permit prior to them getting the groundwater discharge is all right then. Yeah, because it doesn't really, it, 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 it's, 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 it's apples and oranges, two different things, so apples and oranges. Okay, okay. Well, you hate to have them build something that they can't use, right? Well, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't build it. We would hopefully, if we're successful at the local level, we would we would move right into the state level, and that that to us seemed like the appropriate, um, you know, path path forward. Um, and and if there's a, if there's an opportunity, I, I would love uh, I would love to be able to respond to some of the comments and, and concerns that, that you've brought up at, at the right time. Yeah, please. Okay, so any other questions or comments? Uh, Danielle, you know, we have a conditional approval that we have with us. Do we, are we missing anything that we need to wait on here? You're muted or something. Um, I, I, I oh no, she's got that. Oh, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your your mini mouse today, yeah, or Carvel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the well, cake you can just your head yes or no when I ask the question. I mean, we've done that before. <laughs> so ask the question, uh, Warren. Yes. Well, the question would be: Do we do we need anything else in order before we hold a vote on the conditional approval? We don't need anything else. <laughs> I, I have a suggestion for Danielle. Danielle, if you call in from the number th there that on the next to New York, you'll be able to use your cell phone while we see you. I had to do this the other day. Okay. Yeah, I was going to suggest that. It's a good idea, yeah. Mr. Studo. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And she she can let herself in too. <laughs> Me the most. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you'll have to mute your mute your computer and then use your phone. I think Melrose needs five G. What do you think, Chris? <laughs> I don't know. I think she mutes her computer and then turns it on, and there's a problem with the speaker. I, I think it might be in her hardware, not her software. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Danielle. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we, um, so, okay, so we have a conditional approval as everybody kind of read through that. Is there any changes or additions you want to make to it the way it's written? Jeremiah, have you had a chance to read through everything? Uh, no, I'm definitely still catching up on everything. Okay, do you, um, okay. There so were too many you, meetings uh, for him that, that he missed, Warren, to, to even watch him or read in on him yeah i know that's why i'm it's asking like, if, he read, yeah. if he read him if he read himself in that was all so you will uh you will be abstaining for this vote for... i think that's okay. best yeah okay. well that's well, okay i'm just making making everything clear before we begin mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> now her phone doesn't work oh, she's finding the phone number It's like she's dialing. Here it comes. There we go. Now you'll have to let yourself in. <laughs> she she gave the um, host to the uh, chair. Oh oh. oh you let her in, Warren. Okay. okay, hang on here. Okay, you're admitted. No. Uh I'm in. No, you're talking on your on your computer, not on your cell phone. Mute your mute your computer. No, I can't hear you. Oh, she's still wait a minute. She's still muted on her phone, Warren. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, you can unmute phone. her. Can you unmute yourself on your phone? Can I unmute you? I'm sure you can. No, it I might can't. be like I star can't. six too. I've heard people say that on other meetings. I don't know <laughs> if that works. <laughs> Uh, nope, you're still muted. Nine two zero five six zero nine nine.
Um, nope. I don't have. Uh, I don't even see her right now. Yeah. I don't think she's calling user one. That's been on. They've been on for a while. All right. I think she signed off and is signing back in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we'll wait just a minute for her. If she has a problem, we'll just move on. You'll have, to, you'll have to let her in, Warren. That's all. Yeah, that's okay. I did. I admitted her already once. So. Um, It must be her hardware because she she this is the okay, same on, sound. Okay. I'm gonna admit her now. Okay, there you go, you're admitted. You're muted. Hear me? Yep, sounds good. Okay, good. Sorry everyone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um so no, I wasn't awaiting anything further from any of the department comments. Okay. I um no, that, I didn't have anything further. Okay, well there's nothing further then Ryan, if you have a motion, would you uh, read it for us? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Could I interrupt and I always hate to do that. Um but as this being a permit procedure, um, I believe my understanding is that I need four out of the four active members. Yes. So yes. And, um, and I'm really hopeful to get four out of four. And, um, and I just wanted, I didn't know before we took a vote or closed the public hearing, if um, Commissioner Hayden would like me to address some of his, his comments and concern, concerns because I have a lot of good answer to the answers to those and and I'd like to, uh, you know, I want to earn his support and want to make sure that, you know, um, you know, we're all supportive here and and uh, move forward together. Mr. Hayden, you have anything for any priority there that you'd like it addressed? No, you can address everything I talked about if you can. I mean, the, obviously, the way the, the discharge permit has been taken care of. That, you know, that was that was more technicality on that. It was, you yeah. know, do we wait? Do we wait to make a vote until they have it, or you know, is it yeah. all right to vote ahead yeah, of no, time? I'm familiar with that whole okay. process, so no that's, problem there. That's okay. kind of why I focused on you on that one. That's okay. okay. Well, I'm good. So, so there's a couple things, Mr. Hayden, that you brought up, and you know, one is about the uh, asbestos-containing material and that you know Pulte you know made a mistake or or should have known it was there. I can assure you that the asbestos containing material that is in the pile is not the orange bird pipe and associated with the steam tunnels that everybody knew that was there. Those steam tunnels were known to be there. We, everybody knew it, our LSPs knew it and, and everything was properly abated. What is in the pile, which is what the town's LSPs did not know and is what our LSPs did not know at each of the purposes. And that's when in 2007, in 2008, the, um, the, the existing buildings were, were abated and demolished and, and there was a pile of building debris that was buried on the site and it was not located near any of the steam tunnels. It was not located near any of the existing buildings where you, you might have considered that they might be there. It was buried in the middle of the site where nobody would have any idea that it was there. And when we dug it up and put it in the pile, we, it contaminated the whole pile. And there was no way that we missed it. And there was no way that we had any idea during our due diligence that it was, that it would have, could have been there. Bart, so, can I interrupt you for one minute? Was that when the state did the abatement that that happened? Correct. Okay. Because the town Absolutely. did some as well, but I think it was the state that really that the state. Uh, my understanding was, I just wanted you to confirm that because my yes. understanding was it was when the state did their abatement that somebody did that. That's right. So when we made, so during the RFP process we did, we made a $30 million offer for an age restricted community. And we made a, I think it was an $18 million offer for a 40R, which involved 20% affordable housing. And also it would have been non-age restricted. So 
they were two completely separate projects and and the town chose the 30 million dollar um you know offer and and that's in the past i mean so you know I, it's a good it was a good deal for both of us unfortunately it turned out not to be a good deal for us because of the asbestos containing material that was there and that was never planned and there was no way to have known but you know, but that was in the past, and I think the town is happy with their choice. And you know, we're we're very happy building Martin's Landing and being a part of North Reading. Now, this permit modification involves an additional 52 units, and you know, and and so we're offering a 15% affordable housing, which you know is more than the 10% that you know the the state uh, is is mandating all the towns you know, comply with. Um, so. You know, to us, it, it seemed like a win-win for both the town and, and for us. So, we, you know, we were able to provide the town some affordable housing and the town was able to get some affordable housing that, that you don't have and, and actually a little bit more than the 10% that's required by the state. So, you know, that, that was, that was a, I think that's a real mutual you know, benefit there. Uh, as far as the parking, the parking that's out there is for the three buildings that are currently occupied. So every time we build an additional building, we, we complete the project further in phases. And so every time we build another parking area, uh, another building, an additional parking area gets built that's sufficient for the additional buildings. So my point is, is that first of all, there, there, is, no, there is no parking issue out there. And yeah, not all 50 residents of one building can park next to the front door. That's, that's not realistic. But there's plenty of parking for every you every resident in that building to park within with a with, with an acceptable parking space that's been provided for them. But but that's but that's today. But the point is is that as we build additional buildings, these future homeowners are not stealing parking spaces from the building across the, the community. They're going to be parking in the parking lot that's provided for them, which which we've designed that every building has sufficient parking right in their prox proximate location. So I, I, think that, I think that's an important point to make. Um, as far as the elevator, we did have an, ele uh, an elevator problem when we opened up building four. I've said it at the last meeting, I'll say it again today. So when we opened up building four in December, we had some issues with the elevator. Pulte Homes had some issues with the elevator. It was a construction problem. It happens, I guess it's how you respond to it. And Pulte Homes has responded to it very professionally and very uh, professionally. It, it is as is, is good as possibly a company could do to rectify the situation in, in as fast of a time as possible. And as of, the, as of today, the elevator is working um, as it should be. And um, actually the building at the recommendation of the building official, we contacted the state elevator office to review the elevator records. Um, it's a Schindler elevator. And the state elevator office responded back to both us and the building official saying that Schindler has responded very appropriately to all of the, all of the issues and that they would not recommend any additional action and that everything is being done the way it should be. Um, so I, I hope the elevator issues are beyond us, but I can assure you that Pulte Homes is addressing it and has in, in, in a professional manner. Um, as far as the water you mentioned, um, Dan Coughlin is here and he's submitted a very detailed memorandum on both the, the water for domestic purpose, the water pressure wise at the top floors, um, and also the water for firefighting purposes. And, and it's in our opinion that there is plenty of water today to service all of the buildings there and not affect the buildings there. And, um, and you know, everybody knows that the town is currently undertaking a, a huge uh, you know, water improvement project that is slated to be done and completed this year, which will only significantly improve the water system at this in entire side of town. But even without that, you know, we still, um, have submitted an engineering memo from our professional that we believe there's enough water and that we will pass all of the tests. And, and, I, and I say that also with, at the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing, the public safety and the water system was actually one of the biggest 
um, topics that was discussed and, and they're not here tonight, but um, the town engineer, um, Mark, uh, I'm blanking on his last name, Clark, 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 and Deputy Chief Galvin and the fire chief were all there and they spoke, very, uh, they spoke at length and answered a, a dozen questions from all of the ZBA members about um, the um, sufficiency of the water system, the sufficiency of public safety, and, and each and every time they had no concerns with public safety of the five-story buildings or the, um, the water system. And, um, and that's and also part of that coordination with the fire department is where the, the rear walkways around the buildings came from. So they actually, the fire department drove their fire, their ladder trucks out to the site and they went around to each of the buildings with their ladder truck to show that they could access a fifth story very easily for public safety, because that was one of the, the questions. Um, but what they realized is they didn't have great access to the rear. So Deputy Chief Galvin called me and asked me and said, what can you do to get me access to the rear where I can put my ladders down and get up to the top floor? And you know, we worked to update the site plan to add the rear walkways to the six future buildings at, at Martin's Landing where we haven't built yet. And he was very pleased and very appreciative. And we see this as a, as a, a significant benefit to the project as part of the permit. Um, and then the last, you brought up the ground water discharge permit. So Dan, again, Dan Coughlin submitted a very thorough um, um, memo reviewing the system today and how it's designed and, and how it, all of the components of the system, you know, we believe can, uh, can accommodate the, the extra flow. Um, but certainly, you know, we, we have to, um, if we were successful at the local level, you know, we have to go to the DEP and, and submit, you know, our plans and our calculations to the DEP and they, you know, and, and once they find it sufficient and, and agree with us that they would issue it an amended, um, groundwater discharge permit. And, and that process takes some time. And, and that's really why, you, why we wouldn't go there before the local approvals, because it would be sort of a waste of time to, to do that. And yeah, I think, you know, it's pretty, I think it's pretty administrative going to the DEP because all of our engineering shows that it, it works, but um, you have to go through that process. So I think I hit everything and um, you know, I can expand expand upon any of it, but um, I really would appreciate your support, and, and I and I and I hope I hope I was able to uh, address some of your questions and concerns. Okay. May I? Um, hey, Mark. Just thank ask, you. Go ahead, Danielle. Um, so I just um, I just and I think this is just to close the loop. There had been a February sixteenth uh, hearing that we didn't have. Um, uh, Boldy attend um, because there was a continuance based on the ZBA, but I realized there had been a little bit of correspondence in that meeting folder. And I just, um, this is more a question to the CPC. I just wanted to be sure that you had seen all of the correspondence. Um, one of the pieces had been, and I, I, I think uh, Mr. Mastriani just referred to it. Um, uh, there had been some feedback from the, the state fire marshal, I think, um, regarding the, the the water pressure and I just I just wanted to be sure that that was something that you had seen before I realized when we have a meeting yeah. and I give you correspondence if we then don't address that issue I don't know if you've seen it but I just want to be I just wanted to bring it to your attention in case you hadn't I think that's one of the reasons that the ZBA asked so many questions because they saw that correspondence okay and that and that keyed them into a possible problem and so they asked a lot of extra questions concerning that that particular item so Great. Uh, because I do remember that I do remember reading that, but I do I read also it too. know that they addressed it quite rather completely at that meeting. So, Great. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask Mark a question? Yes, go um, ahead, Dave. Mark, did, did the fire department, or really it's more building code, but did did they ask you, or have you done a survey for a BDA? Is there a BDA requirement in the existing units or the new units? Yeah, all of the buildings have a BDA up on up on the roof, and got it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay. Uh, again, Randy, forgive me for asking a, a, a potentially a novice question. Um, but if I understand that location well enough, 
there's a lot of heavy machinery traffic along that that route, especially between where Martin's Landing is and the Iowa. Mm -hmm. Is there any danger that we should foresee with higher density and emergency services being limited by heavy construction vehicles within that 62 uh, corridor, especially between the highway and where emergency services might come from. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that um, I've driven that road many times myself uh, and it seems often to be held up by uh, the heavy construction, um, the um, gravel trucks and whatnot. It seems like if you have a, um, a senior, primarily senior center with potentially more emergency service ne necessary conjunction with heavy traffic, heavy construction traffic. Is there any uh, mitigation to, to that kind of, I mean, it, I'm just thinking out loud here, but uh, forgive me for being new to the group, but that's uh, the thing that comes to mind for me. Uh, Mark, you want to answer? I mean, I have, I can give him part of an answer on that because they just re re basically repaved that whole road, and it's uh, or that section right there anyway, in front across from the pits and all, and it's pretty. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty I don't have access. a, I don't have ahead, a great Mark. answer. Um, honestly, it's just know that the, you know the the police department and the fire department have been heavily involved in this process and and didn't have any concerns of of public safety or emergency, uh, response time. Um, you know, I do have a Bob, oh, I do see is here. He's a very experienced traffic engineer, well-respected. And I don't know if, you know, he had a, a better answer than I would not to put you on the spot, but, um, you know. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members, Bob Michaud with MDM. I, we, we looked at the safety characteristics uh, throughout the initial permitting for the project and mo more currently and um, find no, uh, inability to properly serve the the, the property uh, for emergency response purposes, um, and um, as it relates to um, the number of incidents that might occur at the facility, but several active buildings at this point uh, that provide a good representation of what kind of emergency response activity might occur over time there. And I, to my knowledge, uh, and Mark, you, you're the one that you know. Uh, knows this place best. I don't believe that there's any, been any substantial uh, emergency response activity for those residents that have been living there for, for the past months. So I, I find no evidence that uh, would suggest that there's going to be a problem getting to or from or within uh, this particular property. And I, I don't think that the history of the, the, the residents who are there now would suggest that there's any greater level of um, that type of activity relative to a typical residential development. Okay, um, any other questions or comments? Okay, then I'm gonna actually close the public hearing and, um, and we can move on to uh, looking at that conditional approval. Um, do you, uh, you have that, Ryan, that motion? You're uh, muted, I think, or you're, we can't hear you. Nope, we no can't technical. Hear I actually just emailed Ryan a revised motion because I realized it didn't have all the components. So. Okay. Oh, we still can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you, Ryan. Whatever was wrong before is wrong again. <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, hello. There you go. Now there you go. You. Just turn it off and turn it back on. Works every time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the application for priority development site master permit and parking special permit plan entitled Site Plan for Martin's Landing Multifamily Housing Community 104 Lowell Road, North Reading, Massachusetts, dated March 9th, 2021, drawn by Civil Design Group, LLC, subject to the terms and conditions of the Certificate of Conditional Approval dated March 16th, 2021, as amended this evening. I second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Carroll and a second by Mr. Rudloff. Any further questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. I think we just aye. need a roll call vote. Pardon? 
I think we just need a roll call vote because oh, okay. it's virtual. Okay, we can do that. Okay, Mr. Hayden. Uh, I'm going to hold off. Okay, uh, Mr. Rudloff. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. And myself will be aye. Mr. Hayden. Reluctantly aye. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, so there's your four votes. Thank um, you. You need to call yeah. Jeremiah. Don't forget Mr. Uh, Jeremiah is going to abstain, I believe. Is that correct, sir? You got to give him the chance. Yes, okay. I will abstain. <laughs> Jeremiah, he abstains. Um, yeah, I, I was not totally thrilled with, with changing the, uh, the, the um, with uh, changing the bylaw because we did it for a reason, but um, I understand the question. I understand the, the, the reasoning and everything. And I think that perhaps, I think the good in this case, you know, kind of outweighs the bad. So I think that's why we're willing to move along with it. But, um, um, and getting the affordable in there is also, I think an important point for us. I mean, I think that was um, one of the things that moved everybody along a little. So just for future mm -hmm. thought. I, w I wasn't against the affordable. It was just interesting. What happened well, there? there was a lot. There was a lot. I mean, I, I would have preferred to see it stay. Um, but again, it's there's, 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 there's a reason here. If the state code allows it now, which it didn't before. And so we have some uh, positives in it. And, um, and um, hopefully it'll all work out well. I think that one of the things that really also, you know, just for the record, so you'll understand some of our thinking, Mark, as you go forward. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Is um, I think that the two elevators to me was a very important thing, considering the fact that you're going to have 55 and older people there. And that also was what brought the question about where are you going to put the affordable because you'll likely have less, a more handicapped or a less capable person in these affordable units. And so having them interspersed in the lower levels as well, I think was important, but the dual elevators help a lot as well. Okay, that's some of the thoughts. Okay, that mm -hmm. okay um, if that's, uh, nobody else has any comments on that, there's your vote um, and uh, the best of luck to you, please. Uh, Go forward carefully. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. So our um, the next public continued public hearing is the one ten one twenty four Main Street. And uh, I see Andy Street here. You are uh, you are up, sir. I'm here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Andy Street, Civil Design Consultants, um, here on behalf of the owners and the applicant. Um, well, it's already CR Realty, um, but you guys probably know it as Reading Lumber. Um, I should say, Civil Design Consultants, not to be confused with Civil Design Group, who was just here before. But um, <laughs> if I can, I share my screen, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Go ahead. Just as a, as a quick, I'm, I'm really here, I'll just say it up front, I'm really here more as an update. Um, this is the same plan you saw last time, um, but just as a quick refresher uh, for the commission, um, this is the Reading Lumber site. Um, the area we're talking about is accessed by the driveway if you're standing at the street to the, to the right of the building. So there's a driveway. Okay, excuse me, Annie, just for a moment. Danielle, I, I have a sign saying we are we have two people who entered the waiting room. Is that something that we should uh, deal with? I think you'll need to let them in as the host. And then if you want, you can make me the host back again and I can be in charge of Okay, things. so what do I do? Click view? Um you can click are you getting a, a little choice to admit? No, not. Okay. Um, but it just, says so and so has entered the waiting room. It says two people entered the waiting room. I have a choice okay. to view. Um, go to. I can't view it now because it's not on my screen anymore. Um, uh, hey, the waiting room. You might have to undo a screen share in order for me to get at. Well, wait a minute. Uh, um, Up to the top. Do you have a little bar? What does the bar say at the top? It says. Uh, Two people enter the waiting room, view or X, 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 that's it. Click on that. Click on view. Click on view. Okay, they click on view. All right. Brad Latham and call in user two. That would be you probably though. Um, I don't think I'm on that call okay, anymore. I'm just gonna you admit, admit all, both. okay? I admit them both. Yeah, I would admit both. 
Okay, so it's okay. And then if you want at the top where my screen is, if you can go to the very top right hand corner where the three dots are, you can click on that and make me the host again and then I can just worry about that. Okay, I don't have that on my screen. Am I on your screen? Not right now because <laughs> um, Andy, Andy, screen unshare share. your screen, Andy. Just for now. There you go. Just to get through, get through this little technical issue. Problem. No problem. Okay. Yeah. I see the little thing. Okay. And now I'm I clicked on that. I'm gonna make host, okay? Yes. There you go. Great. You want to change the host to Daniel? Oh um, yes, I do. Hang on, I got it. <laughs> I'm the host. Okay, you are, great. It works. You You're the host now, Daniel. <laughs> Okay. All right, Andy, I think you're up right. again. You can do it again. I'll get it. By the time I have the hang of this, it'll all be over, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all so, learning. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I think I left off. <sighs> the, the, the area we're talking about, this Reading Lumber site, um, there's a driveway to the right of the building, uh, Winter Street, kind of just behind that driveway, more or less. As you come down the driveway to the right, there's two storage sheds today, right, right on the right-hand side. Um, <clears throat> one of the existing short storage sheds uh, shown in this blue line here, they would like to, to tear down and uh, rebuild a new one uh, shown by the line in the red. Um, so we're here before this uh, commission for, for a site plan uh, approval and also for a floodplain special permit. The, the floodplain line is this green dotted line at elevation 76.5. So, so since we were here last, I, I don't know, three three weeks ago or so, I guess, um, we met with the Conservation Commission. We met with them on the 10th. Um, we got very, there was pretty minimal discussion, to be honest, not, not a lot of feedback from the commission. Um, there will be a site visit coming up on the 27th and their next meeting isn't until April. Um, my understanding of the the bylaws that they actually need to act uh, before this commission. So um, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern while we wait for the next meeting in the site walk, but you just wanna come here um, just to give an update, we'll be requesting continuance, um, but uh, there's been some back and forth. Um, I've spoken with Danielle a few times. I've spoken to uh, the building commissioner a couple of times, um, trying to, I, I think kind of the crux of what we're trying to sort out is, is this slab elevation. Um, today, it's it's about a foot below the floodplain, um, and the plane you're looking at has the slab at the same elevation. So the, the bylaw reads we should be a foot above the, the floodplain. Um, we'd like to be at the same elevation. Raising it would cause more disturbance in the floodplain and, and in the conservation buffer zones here. Um, it's, it's something we can do, um, but we're just trying to work through it. And, and as of, I think it was uh, today, maybe yesterday, uh, building commissioner weighed in and, and I think his words, I don't want to misquote, I do have his email here, but um, he, he, he believes that the, uh, what does he say, the concrete floor. Said, what he said was that the floor is a finished product and needs finished to be product, above yes. flood level. That's yes. it. So, so therefore it needs to be elevated above said. the, yep. the uh, floodplain. I, I, I'm not, I, I've asked for some clarification. I'm not sure if I fully understand that assessment, but um, that's kind of where we're at. Um, as I said, we're mentioning, uh, we're requesting continuance here while we wait for conservation to for their next meeting. But if there's any additional feedback from this commission, we'd certainly uh, welcome that as we kind of as we kind of move forward here. I think Andy, that what what if it was a dirt floor, you know, then it would be then it, then it could probably be at the elevation you wanted at. But because it's a poured concrete finished floor, finished product, then then it that that trips the trigger for it to be. <laughs> Uh, above the uh, flood elevation. And I think mm -hmm. that was the building inspectors, that's the building commissioner's uh, um, opinion and that's how we came down on it. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy, you know, oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, so Andy, Andy. Are you, you're, you're, you're demolishing the existing slab though, right? In order to build this, you're not just gonna cut spread footings and put up columns in the frost wall and stuff. You're actually getting rid of that slab. It's just, you wanna stay at that elevation. That, that's my understanding, yeah. And if, if that matters, I'm sure we could have that discussion. Uh, no, I don't, it, it, it's but that's the intention. And uh, sorry to cut you. It, I, I think I'm just I'm looking at the construction. I saw Jerry's uh, email, but 
if you're already doing a four foot kick wall, which is most likely an eight foot wall. So it's four feet below the ground. You know, it's a, a form thing, but it's, it's a four foot kick wall above ground. Why can't you just elevate your slab to one foot? Now you'll only have, you know, three foot three on the foot. inside. Well, actually, Dave, the answer to that, I can help you with that. The problem well, is the whole thing's in the floodplain, and and that and that that extra uh, x by x by how many feet by two feet is that much more floodplain that you're taking away that you need replication for? Right. So, so the the answer is we can we can do that. We can make the site work. I I guess, and I'm not I'm not necessarily arguing about this. I I just to me. Yeah. It, that would mean there's more, as the chair just said, there's more disturbance in the floodplain. Um, there's more compensation that needs to be provided, which again, we can do. You know, more pavement will need to be disturbed. It, it, I think it, it makes the site a little less accessible, to be honest. And I know that's not necessarily this permission's problem, but I think the site in general is kind of works better. It's um, um, just less disturbance overall in the resource areas. Part of my fear is I'm going to wind up in a little bit of a, a circle with conservation, because if I'm on the conservation, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but if I'm on the Conservation Commission, they would likely want less disturbance in the floodplain and the buffer zone. And I'm going to come in with a plan that shows more disturbance. You know, you know what I mean? I could send some back, see some back and forth there. But the, the short answer is we could. We can raise that slab to meet the reg. Um, I, I, I just really want an understanding of, of why, I guess, I'm, I, that, that was kind of where I'm at with uh, the Building Commission. I believe the building commission is going to be uh, he's 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 going to be tied to the to the to the bylaw to the rule that he has. So um, and I'm not sure if you can get the variance from the board of appeals on that. Um, but I but I um, but I also see that in order if when you leave it at that low level, you've got to do some serious flood mitigation in the back of the building so that when the waters come up, they flow through the building and back out onto the ground. I mean, it's sure. uh, that 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 extra work and extra expense there kind of, um, I think probably balances the numbers off. Um, but the real question then becomes more of one of getting access to the building and, and having to fill in because it's not just right now, so everybody understand right now, it's not just the filling in of the inside of the building with that extra foot or two feet of material. It's the fact that now you've got to build up, still in the floodplain, you've got to build up the area where the driveways are and along the side of the building. You've got to build all those up. That's even more disturbance, even more filling of the floodplain and even more replication at one and a half. Well, so I understand right. what your problem is, Andy. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And again, we, we can do it. We can make it all work. It just, uh, you know, we just trying to make sure we're tackling this the right way, I guess, and uh, the most yeah. effective way for for everyone who's interested. And this, this seems to trip on uh, everybody. It's a conservation planning commission has some building implications, <laughs> a lot going on for a- uh, um, what For a very uh, simple you know, thing. A lumber yeah. storage yard, yeah, shit. Yeah. Right, right, right. So Warren. Yep. This is just, this is just a query. It, it's not, not, not much. Uh, the proposed building won't touch that existing building. Is that correct? There's just gonna be enough room to build it in between the two walls. Or are they going to build it from the inside? They will butt up against each other, but no, they'll be, be, they'll be separate the red walls. Line is the new building. Yeah. So they'll each have their own their own wall there. So they'll have it'll yeah, be yeah. yeah 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 yeah. Yes. So, I'm not sure how they're going to put that wall on up against the other building. That's that's kind of the question, Warren. They're going to maybe <laughs> prefab it and then hang it. Maybe they got a real skinny carpenter. Hello. Yes, you hear me? You hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you now. Hey, sorry. I'm trying to test my microphone every, over here. I don't think anyone can hear okay. me. Can I ask a quick question, Jerry? Yes, yeah, please. With regards to uh, Jerry's email, he's referring to the floor as a finished product. Yes. It strikes me as kind of strange wording. Where was the, the finished driven from? Because I've never seen, I, I, anytime you see a finished floor referred to, it's usually referred to as finished space, like occupiable finished space, whereas this seems to be referring to, I guess that it's a, a product of construction versus just earth, which I, I've never seen finished refer to such. I, I just, I, the interpretation just seems strange because essentially we're talking about a shed and because because they're going to pour concrete on the bottom of the shed, it's finished space. 
Hey, Brian, that is pretty common, and in, in, I do a lot of warehouse. It's FFE, finished floor elevation. That's pretty much most warehouses, distribution centers, whatever, whether at dock height or oh, grade. No, I heard like above finished floor as a reference for an outlet or well, whatever not, else. Well, not it's a AFF. completed floor, but when we're referring yeah. to a, something in the floodplain as a finished space, like if this was a, if this was a home, would, it be, would the basement be a finished space if it was just going to be the, the foundation? like a crawl space under a, a home, residential home, you'd refer to that as finished space because it had a concrete floor? Yeah, they wouldn't put a concrete floor in that. They wouldn't allow it. They put, they put. Uh... No, you could have a poured, you could have a poured crawl space. Yeah, but they might the have... no, not in the floodplain though. They wouldn't do it in the floodplain. No, they wouldn't put the building in the floodplain. So I'm well, just curious. So where's the, where's the, like the, I, I remember Danielle referencing it before that, finished like you're trying to attain whether or not it was considered a finished what the finished elevation was in the space what what are we referencing with that with that verbiage uh the fact that it's a poured concrete and that it's been finished no i mean what 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 uh so in other words i i think that jerry's take on it was that when it was done you could at some point in the future put an office in there because it's a finished floor in other words, once it's done and it's a shed and you walk away, then what? Ryan, do you mean what's the significance of it being finished? For the I, I, I recall you were referencing some document that that was part of the qualification we were trying to answer. Oh, it's the standard it he's was. looking for. It's the yeah. bylaw. Um, it's the flood. It's the flood. Plain district special permit bylaw. So um, there are five criteria that the CP has has to make sure the project meets before it can issue an approval um and that is um and one of them has to do with finished floor area and so i was um i was confused about that language in our bylaw and i that's why i had reached out to uh dcr who oversees all of the municipal bylaws because all towns are required to have basically the same language um and they confirmed that if it's if the building inspector considers the floor to be finished floor it has to be a foot above the the base flood elevation right and i i talked to jerry a little bit in terms of trying to get some clarity for my, for my own knowledge i don't really know what's considered finished and what's not um and he was kind of explaining to me that like the difference between like a dirt floor anytime that something has been graded smooth and finished off it's not so much the type of flooring but but he would consider a, a cement floor to 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 be that okay so I guess that's well, the idea of course, right is that you could in the future um, actually put an office or a bathroom or anything in there because the floor is finished. You have you, you yeah. have finished the floor, right. and so yeah. you, you but you can, couldn't, you know, and, and um, or conversely, uh, you could not finish it now and pour later and have a finished floor too. Yeah, right? yeah, you could. So if this was yeah. a gravel floor, does that does that mitigate? Does that alleviate the problem? Yes, if it had a gravel floor at the original elevation, yeah. Who would have thought? What's, what's kind He's of going to have footings and poured frost walls and four foot knee walls. I guess a, a couple of things. I mean, they needed a building permit for the office, right? And then they get denied. Yeah, one, would, uh, one would assume. Right. That, doesn't yeah, well, yeah, they, that doesn't mean they do it all the time, Andy. Well, yeah. They, well, this they're saying they wouldn't be just a desk put up against the wall. Yeah, right, right. Because now you're using it as a finished space, even though it's just a desk and a chair. Right. Or even well, a little what, writing platform and a, and a stool. Right. You know, you're, 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 you're using it as a finished site. Hmm. I think the intention of this building, just to back up, just from the presentation last week, or was it the week before? I can't keep track, but was it's just going to be a larger storage yes, shed you exactly. know, for the lumber yard. But, uh, but Warren, you, you raise a good point. So I'm wondering if you can, if you can leave it stone or leave it, let's just say pervious, um, you know, so whether it's grass creed or some of the other products that they have, so it'd be a permeable floor. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that gets around it. The other, the other thing I'd, I'd recommend Andy, obviously, talk to the, the structural, but you could probably accomplish this with just uh, grade beams. Um, you know, what, what's the width of that building? Uh, 60, I believe. I believe it's... Yeah, I mean, somewhere on the 12s or whatever, and then you just pour a structural slab over. So essentially, you just have these long runs of, 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 of wall that are basically up um, 
one foot, if you will, um, even less. And, and then they would just have the slab topping over them. So the, the slab supported by the grade beams, but essentially the grade would stay the same level as it is. Um, so there would be no mitigation and you would, um, you know, and water could run through and under the facility or under the building too, to help those same uh, doors. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's certainly something we can, uh, I'll, I'll pass it along and consider that. I saw one of those in Brunswick, Maine in a, in a, it was a warehouse in the, and it's uh you know much bigger but that's how they did it and yeah, so the Dave, what you're talking about is, is is putting beams down and then then putting the steel mesh over it and pouring a, a wall a floor that's supported by the beams so that the original floor elevation stays the same it's still a dirt floor under the beams underneath the right. floor right so if they're just it's running building say on the direction of the arrow there they'd be running along that even arrow. better I even better example for you go to go out to the main road in, in North Reading to China Cuisine and look at the building out behind there. <laughs> Is it similar? <laughs> it's no, it's 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 a uh, it's a total feed through uh, foundation. Yeah, it's 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 Except arched, it's, for, there's, it's it's built in water flows underneath it. Just you know, the yeah. minimal amount of disturbance, just whatever the footings were to hold the building up. Above the, the, only, the only problem with that building is they use cement block, which yep. is porous, and, the, and they get wet and they blow off the paint all the time. They can't waterproof it. Yep, so yep. do it with poured concrete if you do yep. that. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, they, your, your, your point is well taken, Dave. I'm not sure that they would, uh, that you could get all that to the Conservation Commission and have them understand what it is you're doing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> without and then you'd have to have a fairly well drawn engineered plan with all the explanations and yeah right 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 okay but you'd have less excavation if you if you do drill you know drilled tubes and mm -hmm. that's that's how you'd support these grade beams that get you right. up i mean then mm -hmm. you're only just drilling around the perimeter you're actually not excavating um, doing the big trench that you'd need for a frost wall and spread footing so it's a, it's got its advantages. You're just augering, pouring, and then setting the great beam on beams on it. Yeah. What kind of what you great beam, Andy, you know what a great beam is. I'm just talking in this case, it'd be maybe uh, one foot by one foot with rebar in it. That's it. Yeah. You know, it's not, we're not talking about a, this giant, what typically are four yeah, foot so high or so beams. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah that's you probably would want to do two thirty footers and set them. Right. Right. End to end, yeah. Yeah, oh, we'll kick that around. Yeah, okay. If I might, Mr. Chair, can I ask one quick question? You, you mentioned right the um, ZBA, so relief from the bylaw would come from the ZBA. I think, you, I don't know if you mentioned yeah, that. If you have a, a dispute with the building inspector, you'd go to the Board of Appeals. Okay, and so so the, the permit for the floodplain comes from this commission, right? Right. So, so this commission, in theory, would have the authority to waive that, but then we'd wind up trying to get a building permit and have some trouble. If I could convince you to waive it, is that? Is that I just want to make sure I understand because if the ZBA needs to get involved, that that kind of might change the dynamic and where we put our efforts too, because that's a whole nother board right. and more time and all that kind of thing. So, I, I just want to make sure I understand the process. I think. Well, we have to. We have to without without uh, any variance, we would have to stick to the bylaw. Okay. 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 Right. All right. No, that's good to know. All right. Well, yep. um, yeah, no, yeah, this, this is good feedback. Um, you know, we'll, um, I'm not quite sure where we turn next. We probably will, if we tweak the plan, it'll go wind up. When does this commission meet next? Is it before? In two weeks. In two April weeks. April 6th. Okay. So it would meet before that. So we'll have to talk about whether we modify the plan represent it to you we'll figure out the timing of how we of how we move forward but um, we'll stay in touch with danielle as we go okay, go from there. okay. all right uh, so this is a public hearing it's a continued public hearing so if there's uh, if you could uh, uh close down your screen share please so we sure. can see if there's any other comments or questions from the uh, public before we um continue this so uh, if there are any questions or comments from the public please let me know now I do not see any. Okay, so we're going to continue this, Danielle, to um, April 6th. Does that date 
work for now. If you find you need more time, you can always request a further continuance. Sure, you know, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, why don't we continue it till 8 p.m.? Uh, sorry, no, we have two zoning hearings that night. So why don't we say, um, do you want to do this at 7.30? Yeah, um, I suppose we can do that. Yeah, yeah I, do it that we way. We may not be able to finish even, so okay. So let, let's see where we're at and at 7.30 and see if we can move it along. Okay. Just so, get us our, your information to us on time, Andy, so we can review it. So we, we yeah. have our, we're ready to go with it. Sure, absolutely. All right. I, I, I just you've did done have a good one, job, so. Go ahead. Go ahead. One question. Um, when I had initially talked with um, a conservation agent about the project, I had some questions about the flood zone and she had mentioned she thought it would be helpful to have a peer review done for the floodplain issues. And I think it's possible the Conservation Commission might need that more than we need that. Um, it seems as though we've been able to get the guidance we need. I, I asked DCI for a quote, which I haven't yet received, but are you, um, I mean, it, it, it's up to you whether you think we, are in need of a peer review or not. If not, I suppose we could have the Conserva Conservation Commission get the help that they need. Um, are you sure that that's in floodplain? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, because I know that, you know, sometimes the, uh, the floodplain maps show things that are in floodplain, but that a tight engineering um, uh, survey will show that perhaps not, so. Yeah, the, the elevation If you've already done fine. that, you're sure you're in it, then that's yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's not a little, it's a lot of it. It's like 90% yeah. of the building. Am I right, Andy? Yeah, it's, it's pretty substantial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Nothing I can't fix with a quick line change, but <laughs> yeah, well, then <laughs> 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 we go out there with a satellite GPS. Yeah. You can find out how high you are. Right. Yeah. 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 Pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. So do you, uh, do we need a motion to uh, continue this or are we still in the time frame? The time frame. I mean, you, yeah, we can. We're fine to continue it till April sixth at seven thirty. If that's. Do we need a motion what, for that right now? Um, I think we have one. No, I, Mr. Carroll can so move it. You just said it all. Oh yes. Do Mr. Pierce, I move the community planning commission vote to grant the request and continuance for the public hearing for one ten one twenty four Main Street until Tuesday, April sixth at seven thirty p.m. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, yes, you can vote on this one, Jeremiah. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Because you've heard Thanks the whole thing. <laughs> all right. All right. Good night, Excellent. everybody. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Right. Yes, Thanks, Andy. Andy. Okay. Hey, Ryan, uh, don't mute uh, yourself anymore. Much all I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm just going to hold my hand over the mic. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, I think we're all set. I think I covered everything tonight. I believe that's where we're there. Yeah. So I guess I just wanted to ask you where we'd like to go next with the 5G discussion. Do we want to continue? Oh, yeah, we got to talk about that. Kind of hammer that out. Um, uh, do you want to do it tonight? Do you want to do it next time? Do you, want, do you want me to try to find a separate meeting time and we can just talk about it then? I mean, yeah, I'd like to throw it under the bus. Yeah. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Actually, Danielle, I, I tried. I yeah. tried to look at the uh, FCC um, full document and there was nothing to download. So it, yeah, it well, has gone away. Bad. It's big. I can send you the link if that's helpful. That, that's something because I mean, I tried to do it on the computer. It's just not there. It's just, it says it's it says it doesn't, it's not there. So yeah, it says it's not there when you try to download it. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if it wasn't successfully uploaded even. It was not successfully interest. uploaded. Yes. That's yeah, maybe problem. that's but what happened. Read, but you can get it. You can get it from the FCC, but but the, but the thing is, it's that it, 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 there's really nothing in there, Chris, that changes um, what we do. In other words, all it does is oh, say, I know. Oh, you got to do this. <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's worse than when Why they came out with the cell towers. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, when the cell towers came out, they said you, you had to let them in, but you could regulate them and you could do it the way you wanted to, as yeah, long as you got they, coverage. And then, and then, and then in, what is it, 94 or something, they, they stiffened the rules up dramatically so you couldn't regulate them as much as you used to be able to? Yeah, and, and it's because yeah. the towns weren't letting them in. They were, yeah. they were over-regulating them, so they put their foot yeah. down and says, we got to have this stuff, and now it's yeah. so loosey-goosey, it's killing us. For the towns that were good and allowed it and, and made it work, you know, it's, 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 well, this we, is, we this pay is the price. Onerous, though. This is, this is, um, 
this is onerous. This this is really heavy duty. This five G yeah. thing. Well, they, I think the people who uh, that did it don't understand what it all entails. I think the the uh, people that are fans of the height of the speed and all that, that and and the advantages of it don't realize what they got, you know, what kind of, what's necessary to make it work. I mean, yeah. you know, you obviously, you have to, I mean, three, 300 feet in any direction. It's a How football field. That? That's a football field. How are you going to do that? I mean, and you, well, you know, because it's in North Reading, <clears throat> it's going to be very difficult, but if you go yeah. to the city, not it's so not. much because there's yeah. so many buildings, there's so many places to put antennas that you could, that, you know, on top of the buildings where you could hide a, a a, um, put them on the side of the building a power, a, a, an equipment cabinet and not nobody even see it you know right, right. so right. but that's not going to be the case when you got single family homes 500 feet apart right so hey danielle when you were looking at the burlington um i was looking at that burlington one and mm -hmm. they, they've got those you know they show you their original antique street light with all the junk on it. And then they yep. show you another light, but they don't give you any sizes of that other light. Is there a way to f get some technical information? Cause that's just a depth. That's just a, an illustration. That's not, yeah. A you know, I don't want to get caught with a, with the uh, branches on a, you know, a cell yeah, tower. Know. Yeah. You no, know? That's, a, and, uh, that's just an illustration, Chris, that doesn't actually represent what it would really look like. Yeah. Well, I mean, there the the junk hanging on it. Yeah. In their guidelines, there are some of those specifications. Like it has to be 38 cubic feet. At least, yeah, the 28 cubic feet is a limit. And that actually, I saw that in RMLD's regulations too. Mm -hmm. um, and then Burlington was also saying everything has to be, it has to be at least 10 feet up off the ground, but then they have an upper height limit depending on what type of facility it is. Um, okay. I think it was they a 35 foot on, you know? <laughs> limit for poles. Um, yeah, it sounds about right, yeah or no more than an increase of 10% among like poles within a, you know, a certain hundred feet radius. The, the problem with filling in what the blanks are, these are the blanks that KP has left in mm -hmm. what we're supposed to fill in. And I have no way of knowing, okay, blank diameter pole. I don't know how wide a diameter pole this requires. So I can't say it should be five inches or well, that, 20 inches. I don't know. Because yeah, nobody's reason, done it. That's the reason that I want to see somebody else do it. So we can go take a look right. at their pole and measure right. and see how big a diameter it is. But, I, but exactly. I, believe, I believe that you can, um, I believe you can get that answer without too much trouble going online to find out what the equipment, what five, the 5G equipment looks like or what's available from the companies. Not that you want to go see Huawei, but one of the others maybe. <laughs> Right. I mean, so far, so Burlington has a lot of Don't dimensions already. And I've, I've started to note down which blanks I think we can fill in if we wanted to plug right. in what Burlington has done. I might be able to look through to see like if Boston has, you know, required pole diameters. I've already asked KP this question, like, do we have minimum specifications that we have to allow based on what these companies need? And they didn't have them. So I yeah. I mean, we can do our best to copy other towns. It's just well. I think one of the things about this whole thing is also is it's 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 very it's it's typical of new technologies, and that is that you know the first computer took up the size of a gymnasium, and and you can do that with a watch now. Yep. And so the the question is, are we are we going to be able to downsize some of this equipment as as it becomes, you know, something that we're going to do? Can we start downsizing it so that it fits in a and a reasonable package on, on a pole. But the other but the other problem that occurs to me, and I mentioned before, is these things chew up a lot of power. So at some point you've got to get power to that thing. So if all you have is enough power to power that light bulb on that pole, now you've got to start running wires uh, of some kind, of some 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 dimension to power these things up. And the only way you can run you either got to run big wires or tiny wires with high voltage. So, um, and then you and can then you can transform it down inside the pole to get to what you want or whatever. I mean, but there's, there's got to be, there's a whole lot more to it than just the little antenna up top there. There's, there's, you know, and, and, and they have to have batteries too, Warren. They got to have backup. backup. Yeah. 
because people oh, want this backup for the whole power system at that at, at a backup power per street or something you know yes they got to do you know, something there too every so many poles a, a backup package of some kind yep because if they can if they can limit the backup packages to one every thousand feet or something at least the, the equipment on the pole won't have a huge battery pack that somebody's got to right with. right so so, uh, so the question is how it's how it's done you know we don't really know how it's done yet i mean we got a little bit of an education before but it was i think it was lacking in in some specifics that we needed and and it could be because those specifics uh, don't really exist yet it, it, everything's still in development so um we're kind of uh so so i so that's why i'm i'm, I'm okay with come up with a bylaw that may be a little onerous and then if we get challenged on it, we can, we can, you know, battle with it. Um, but by the same time, we'll buy some time for somebody else to get this done and perhaps for some advancement in some of the technology. I don't know. Why don't we do this? Um, our, our zoning hearings on April 6th are all things that we've had discussions about previously. Right. And I'm guessing they're not going to be extremely long. Nope. Um, so why don't we plan to we'll have our zoning hearings as scheduled at the next meeting on the 6th. We have, we'll have Reading Lumber coming back in, but why don't yeah. we like devote an entire, just an hour to our meeting next time. And in that time between now and then, I'll just see, I'll just get as much as I can on yeah. what the more technical specifications are. And yeah. I'll just come up with some suggestions and we can just go through them. Yeah. I know that there are there are I know that there are places where they've already put the 5G in places like China and places like that. And I don't know that you can um, get pictures of that or what they did or whether they even care if it's aesthetically pleasing or not. But if we could find some place where there is a 5G network operational, then and take a look at what they did. Um, it would give us an idea of, of what it is what it is we need to do. I mean, okay. and so I, I really I just think I just think we're I just think the whole thing we're a little bit ahead of ourselves with the whole thing right now is what I think. Warren, I think the uh, gentleman that spoke to us two weeks ago, um, <laughs> nice Ryan, um, he had uh, they, Boston's doing some of the five G. Yeah, I think it's up. And, and I think he's got some equipment that's in the field that we might be able to get pictures of. Yeah. So the dark red here is, is deployed Verizon. Yeah. So you can yeah. see where it's, it's, it's in test cases and, you know, small areas, but it's out there. It doesn't come really North. Yeah. Of, yeah. So we should Bedford. take a look and see what they've, what, what it looks like. I mean, if, if it's there, let's see what it looks like. And, and it looks like Malden has some right there. Right. So, yep. so, um, so if Malden has some, they must have a bylaw. Okay. Why don't we cannibalize that? And um, the, and they must have some pictures of what they of what it all looks like. So let's let's do that. I'll go take uh, some. That's just down the road. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, you live that's there. In Malden, that's in your neck of the woods. Go have a look. Okay. Call call the uh, planning administrator up over there and see if they'll give you a tour. Okay. I think she knows them. Didn't, didn't we interview the person that's the planning administrator in Malden now? Chair Pierce. That that guy that we didn't take? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I hear something. Uh, anyway, Is yeah, that so Mr. Studo? I think that's our next that's our next uh, best thing. Okay. That oh, way we'll is... have that way we can actually see a picture of something. We can see what it He's looks like, around. where it's actually working and how it all how it's all done. You'll get an idea how big those cabinets need, need to be. Actually, the cabinets are the one thing I actually know how big they need to be. It's it's some of the other things. I think yeah. it's 28 cubic feet. That seems to be consistent. Um, but I'll try to fill in the rest of the blanks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, and then we'll just I put the actually, bylaw together and then we'll wait and see. Go ahead. Actually, Chair Pierce, I was going to say that I, uh, I grew up in Malden. I still see my parents there like once a week. So yeah. I can even take a look for you if you want. Also, if we want an in-depth look, uh, Chair Kate Many Pelly is the city solicitor of Malden. Right. So if we need maybe a we need some help at some internal <laughs> documents or something. No, no, I want on the ground pictures, <clears throat> Vincenzo. I want to see. I want pictures of the units with the antennas on. I want to see. Yeah, what let me see if I like. can get uh, Ryan. Did that map you showed go zoom in enough to show actual individual streets where they yes. are? 
Oh yeah, no streets on it. Yep, they do. Okay. Yep. Because oh, I know, okay. I mean, I, I grew up in Malden, picture. so I know yeah. pretty much the entire city. Okay. Yeah. So we just want to have a look at at what they're actually doing, what's actually working, what 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 are the cat, what's the compartments look like, what does it look like? Okay. Yeah, you can get right in there. Zoom. Yeah. Oh, you're trying to get to the right place. Which one? You're in room? Revere right now. There's Everett. You're going to Revere. You want to go into the left. There you go, Medford. Medford. Yep, there right you go. Yeah, zoom in Ryan. now. Oh, go back a little bit to the left. Back west. Yeah, go back to Malden. There you go. There you go. go. Oh, oh. Hold right that. There. And you want to scroll, scroll. Now he's, up a little, scroll. He's, he's looking for his street. <laughs> 5G, the dark, scroll down. The dark red is the 5G. Okay, so Just the wide these little my. I used to rent right there off Clifton. My mother-in-law lives on Hawthorne. So I'm going to be there tomorrow right the, on Hawthorne Street. Right in the neighborhood. I'm going to be right there tomorrow. Good. So cool. I will. What am I looking for again? Boxes? So you're looking for the light poles or whatever it is. They got the little antennas on. Okay. Okay. That's off Cedar. And, okay. I know exactly what that is. I mean, you know, it's a good yep. thing because there's a nice nursery school there. I bet you they were real happy about putting it there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I see where it is. So as you see right there where it says Elsie Street, that's where I rented. Ah. First apartment. So like, yeah. I okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a few photos and see how aesthetically uh, pleasing it is. Let's put it like that. There you go. That, that's that's cool. kind of what we're looking at. And what do they got on the street? You know, how many do they have? Yeah, that's um, a lot right there. So you see that? Wow. Okay. All right. That's okay, a this lot is there. Just oh, Medford has a lot. Medford Malden line right there. That's again where my around where my parents live. Well, that's yeah. a wow. Yeah. I, I I've never. Well, that's right on the I, Fells way. Yeah. And the but mm. the best part is that like they must be well integrated because I'm in Malden at least twice a week and I've never even noticed them. Maybe there's just not enough of them yet. Supposed Probably to be not. Sales. Broadway. That's oh, Arlington. 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 That's a lot. Oh, I see. I think I see my old street. Wow. They got Arlington they to, it? to let wow. them in. Yeah. They, well, they got to. You can't <laughs> keep them out. That's the whole thing. Yeah. So let, we'll say, and let's check with these people to see what their bylaws look like. Border Square. Oh, they don't have one. Maybe they do. They, they might. Yeah. They might. So let's, let's plagiarize. Plagiarize. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, with permission, Warren, with permission. <laughs> well, you know, there's no sense reinventing the wheel. And, and, and again, That's right. I, I, I'm hoping that as time goes on that they, uh, that we get that, again, that technology get, you know, at, when they, when this becomes an important enough thing, that technology begins to control the sizing of it some and we get something. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, and the other thing about it is that if you can, one of the things that happens when you begin to miniaturize some of this stuff is the power requirement goes down. Oh yeah, and, and that's and that's another I think important point for these for these things right now. So, <clears throat> so. I'm going to guess that they're not going to put as many up as they say they're going to in those configurations until they can miniaturize it and reduce the power because they're just going to die with the power. Yeah, well, they're going to be they're going to have to be placed where there's enough density to support it too. So that's, yeah, uh, that's the other thing. Okay, so uh, you good with that? We'll get at that next meeting. We'll we'll take a look at pictures and we'll finish off that bylaw. Great. Okay. Okay. Does so Debbie April sixth is an important meeting. So yeah. <laughs> we'll miss April sixth. Thanks, Ryan. Keep it on your uh, us. <laughs> keep it on, keep it on your schedule. Does Debbie need any signatures from us? And I was in there today. I took care of a few. So, uh, but just payroll stuff. So yeah, all good. I guess yes. not. She's not unmuting. Well, no bill. She had no bills today, so that's okay. So yeah, you would have signed them. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, then I would have told you. So that's right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then a good all night, right. everybody. Thank all you right. very much, all for good coming. Night, right. Did you, you didn't have an update or something you wanted to do? Did you, Danielle? It, it, it's nothing urgent. It, it can all wait. It's um, Charles ridiculous. Street. What's that? <laughs> Charles Street. <laughs> <laughs> they sold five lots up there. There's people building up there. Yeah, they're moving. They're Are moving. they really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. There is still, Dave Giangrande says there's still a small repair that needs to be made in a drain pipe, but it's, um, we're, we're working with the owner and it's, it'll get done, um, yeah. which happened after the bond. So there's a small bit that's unbonded, unfortunately, but to get it done. He said he would do it. So. Yeah. We always hate that. Okay. You're moving. Yeah. Um, I told to you, along, so, oh, you know, yeah. um, but, I told you at the, oh, the, sorry, at the last meeting that we would be designated a housing choice community. Unfortunately, when I looked at the building permit data carefully, we don't qualify. So probably next year. But okay. um, it, it turns out that the reporting to the census of our building permit activity is over by like 89 units within five years. And that's not great. So I'm working with the census to correct that before the 2020 numbers are released. Um, and just uh, just with regard to the 40A changes that I know we talked about a little last time, I spoke with the town council and there's nothing that we need to do for this town meeting. Um, it's too early. DHCD has to release their own regulations for what the communities are going to be required to do. So right now we don't have anything that urgently has to be jumped on. Okay, um, so basically we have the governor's rule, the new rule there, but but it hasn't but it hasn't been put into play by the state yet. Right. Yeah. It's, okay. So we yeah. don't have so, to modify any of our bylaws till then. Yeah. Till they Possibly October, away. but I'll keep you updated. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. 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 So that's Take it. Take some of the pain off the whole thing. Okay. Now we're done. Now we're done. Uh, if, 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 if I can have a moment. Please, um, please Jeremiah, let's jump right in. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, a great introduction to this whole group. And <laughs> if there's any um, additional information that would help me get up to speed for the next uh, call, please share with me. I, I, I'm eager to learn anything I can to catch up. And I look to be more uh, helpful. <laughs> the, well, if you, have, if you have your if you have the iPad with all of the stuff that's in it, in that in that uh, main page in the left column, there's all kinds of things that are in there, as well as the zoning bylaws and everything else. You can you can scroll through some of that, read it, and get an idea of some of the stuff from the past. Yeah, I should. I hope to pick up the iPad tomorrow. Okay. Um, and we can also talk, let's find a time to just schedule some time on the phone and I can try to talk you through everything, the kinds of applications we get, what to expect, how, right. how everything works and we, we can set something. That'd be great. Yeah. Right. Danielle's a great reference and information person and go get her. <laughs> you. So is Debbie. Is that about right, Warren? <laughs> yes, yes. And I, but I also agree with Debbie. Debbie is a hard worker. She makes sure things get done. She does. She does. <laughs> Absolutely. And she stays on top of me on I'm you know, come on, you gotta do this. <laughs> well, I think I got enough signatures to be on the ballot. So thank you for everybody who helped me out with that. And yes, great, great. I, that's I good. That's that, good. I hope that means that I get to participate for a bit longer. Yep, yeah, for a bit longer. Good, <laughs> good deal. <laughs> Well, we were looking forward to having somebody, and uh, and uh, the, like, as we said before, there was some, just a bunch of great choices. You know, uh, just really uh, happy with the quality of people that that wanted to be on this board, and and we're very happy to have you. So, thank you. Okay, so we're all set then now, and uh, like we can all say good night. We're ready. You're all done. She always says one more thing. I have to be careful. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well then good night all. Uh, thanks for coming to the meeting and, and for your participation.